Äh. Gut. Machen wir einfach. Machen wir direkt weiter. <lacht> Schauen wir mal, was heute passiert. Ach, ich wollte noch was gucken. Genau. Moment. Schauen wir mal. Vielleicht sind ja die Emotes schon freigegeben. Äh. Nein, immer noch nicht. Sind immer noch in der Prüfung drin. Schade. Naja. Hey! Nau hat abonniert. Dankeschön. Dankeschön. Nur das Primer Pro. Aber immerhin. Immerhin etwas. Vielen, vielen Dank. So. Okay, also machen wir mal weiter. Ach, ich habe übrigens die die Dings, ähm, die Preise für das ganze Zeug mit dem, mit den neuen Punkten ein bisschen angepasst, damit das, damit man da ein bisschen länger drauf hinarbeiten muss. Ah, ja. Nur zur Info. Nicht, dass sich jemand wundert. Okay, also, jetzt machen wir. Machen wir jetzt weiter hier. <clears throat> Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple, couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. I am Gigi. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh? Th that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh? Why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Uh -huh. Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Frage. Ah ja. Ah ja, Frage ist jetzt nicht allzu viel höher. Obwohl die Frage könnte ich eigentlich auch wieder auf 50 unten lassen. Weil an sich... Oder Frage könnte ich an sich eigentlich komplett rausnehmen, weil Fragen kann man so oder so im Chat... Mal schauen. 100 passt eigentlich auch. Ja, ich lasse es mal so drin. Aber wie gesagt... An sich kann man eigentlich auch im Chat fragen. Und wenn ich's sehe, dann beantworte ich's auch und so. Okay. Only two small coins fall out. Uh, <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, say Rory. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have brought, bought a snack before coming to the club room. So, either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you planned to conveniently forgot, forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so, that only leaves the one option. Ah, I give up. Ah, don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? 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 It, I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in a book, as always. Uh, ah, 
I, I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri! Tell MGG to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can res what you can responsibly afford. Wieso so wird das um 40 bis 60 Leute hier sind? Hatten wir überhaupt mal 40 bis 60 Leute? Wir hatten auf jeden Fall mal einen ganzen Haufen mehr. Ich weiß nicht, ob das an die, an die Zahl rankommt. Gurashi Manga angelesen. Zeichenstil von den Augen von Rika. Was meinst du mit dem Zeichenstil? Wir haben 1 Uhr morgens noch 40 Leute. Eieiei. Ah ja, vielleicht wird es auch mal wieder so. Mal schauen. Ah ja, was... Was genau? Denn... Drogentrip. Boah, da müsste ich, müsst ich, müsst ich nochmal in den Manga reinschauen. Ich kann mich gerade nicht wirklich erinnern. Müsste ich nur mal in den Mangel reinschauen. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, he's suffering his fair enough retribution. Ah, did I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't have much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... Th there's no way you ca could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the re revolution. R retribution. That! Still coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside of inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Oh, what was... Huh? A, a, a cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my rich protrusion. Moment, was hat was hat die gesagt? Restitution. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. Verhältnismäßig super riesig. Oder riesig und komplett weiß. Ha! Huh. Ja, wie gesagt, ich muss da nochmal reinschauen. Schon lange ich mir den Manga gelesen. Ahaha! <lacht> I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your re reaction though. <lacht> Natsuki! That's so, that's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rap rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. Sure, good. Mmm. Sayori suddenly claps, clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. <laughs> Going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks very good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez, beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? I'm still really happy that you shared this one with me. 
<laughs> Sari gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Oh. Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! You seriously. Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Yori and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club uh, club room. <sighs> Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just said something to do her today. She's pretty, pop pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Excuse me. Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Yeah? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah, well, my last period today was a study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. Must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? Wie lange war das schon? Boah. Er ging, ging mal wieder ein bisschen länger. I, wa I wasn't aware you played music as well. Ach, das ist Juri. I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play some, some something for us, Monica. That's. Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, MGG. Monica smiles sweetly. <laughs> I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? Not... not really. I choose to leave out Zayori's mischievous es escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. Ah, ich glaube, bis, bis dann, Ritos. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yori is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Hey, Yuri. Huh? Ah. I suddenly noticed that Yuri is reading a different book from the one we've been reading together. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Ah, no. I was kind of just waiting for you. Ah, if that's the case, why don't we go ahead and get started? Yay. Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yori stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yori hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk and then we'll go get some water. 
She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrast contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Now I might as well walk with you. Yeah, why not? Shall we go then? Yeah. Hmm, where are you two off to? Huh? We just... Yuri was going to make some tea, so... I suddenly realized how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We're just filling the water pitcher. Ah, okay. So I was just a bit curious. That's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? That's... Monica, please mind your own business for once. Uh, do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve... Uh, wrong with helping involve MGG in club activities? Uh, my mouth gapes. I... I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> then let's go MGG. Uh, Yuri quickly exits the room and I follow. Hmm. Bisschen, bisschen harsh. Just gleich test. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri. I just... Something about the way she said that, it made me feel so irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri. I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but it's also not right for Monica to just to judge people like that. MGG, how come even when I do something bad, you're being nice to me? Because nothing that you do is as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions and we can't always hide them away. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a li light rain shower into a hurricane. <sighs> no. W wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? Friend, you say? Ah, uh, uh, um. Yuri lifts her head. MGG, I really like being friends with you. <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that. But I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Shall we go? Yeah. Yuri and I walk to the nearest water fountain. Once we fill up the water pitcher... We return to the classroom. MDG, do you like all long tea? Ah, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature to, on the kettle to 200 degrees. 200? Fahrenheit, oder? Done. Ja, 200 Fahrenheit sind 93, 94 Celsius. <lacht> Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything. <lacht> In that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Oh, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking. And I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out, it's not even hard for me to do. When it's you who's around anyway. <sighs> That's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, MGG. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. MGG, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Huh? Why is that? 
it's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Ah, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly re regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because my... Uh, my... Your yeah, posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading. Yes, I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I go ahead and get the book. I retrieve the book from my bag. Ah, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies that I kept hidden from Zayori's candy ra radar. Radar. I take it since it'll go well with the tea. Schokolade und Tee. Hmm. Naja. <lacht> Na, Rückenschmerzen sind nicht, nicht sonderlich toll. Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. <sighs> How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand, that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch a chest. <sighs> Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears an intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. Macht man mit 70%iger Schokolade. Hm. Ja gut, ich, so dunkle Schokolade mag ich dann auch wieder nicht. Da habe ich nicht so die Erfahrung. Wir kommen zurück, Test. Ach ja, äh, ganz vergessen. Ähm, für alle Freunde der Creepypasta, Vertonungen und so weiter, morgen Nachmittag, äh, so 17 Uhr rum, kommt der letzte Teil von Honor Hill online. Der geht noch mal ne, ein ganzes Stück. Moment, habe ich das eventuell noch da? Dann kann ich mal kurz gucken. Ne, nee, habe ich nicht mehr da. Und dann werde ich die komplette Geschichte in einem Video noch hochladen, was dann ja morgen ist Mittwoch, vielleicht am Donnerstag schon oder Irgendwann dann später die Woche. Auf jeden Fall die Woche noch äh, rauskommt. Insgesamt, insgesamt geht es im Moment 2 Stunden, 12 Minuten und 40 Sekunden. Und ich habe mich vertan, es sind insgesamt 5 Kapitel. Aber das fünfte Kapitel ist sehr, sehr kurz. Deswegen habe ich das vierte und das fünfte Kapitel in ein Video zusammen rein. Weil ich glaube, das fünfte Kapitel, das wäre nicht mal 5 Minuten lang oder so. Aber ja, morgen, morgen 17 Uhr, neue Creepypasta, Blitzerteil von Honor Hill und ja, dann später die Woche komplettes Video, komplettes Honor Hill und ich glaube, dann werde ich mir mal, werde ich mich mal an der Kritik für Anias Godzilla ransetzen, weil das wurde ja schon sehr oft gewünscht, das wird dann werde ich dann auf jeden Fall als nächstes machen. Wie lange das dauert, muss ich mal gucken. So. After a few minutes, minutes, I finally managed to rex a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Ah, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. 
You can have as much as you want. Oh, that's... That's okay, I won't take any. No? Are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then it might get smudged on the pages. Ah, oh, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Ooh. See you. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. <sighs> well, in that case, Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then I take another chocolate. And I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the si this situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... Did it just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Uh... -oh. MGG, sorry. I guess I shouldn't have done that. No, that's... Well, you were just helping. That's something that friends do, right? I mean, not really in this kind of context, but... Yeah, that's all it was. Yeah, then you don't need to stop or anything. Uh, I see. The situation has gotten really tense. Yori tries to return to the book. But I can tell just by her expression that even she can't focus now. Liegt Yuri. Nee, nee, die, äh, die haben sich, die haben sich auf den Boden gesetzt, damit, damit Yuri sich, äh, an die Wand anlehnen kann, weil sie Rückenschmerzen hat wegen ihrer Haltung, während sie, während sie zum Beispiel am Tisch liest und so gebückt sitzt. Und da tut ihr Rücken dann weh. Deswegen hat sie gemeint, sie wird ganz gerne am Boden an die Wand gelehnt lesen. Die anderen sind auch noch im Raum, ja. Irgendwo. Wahrscheinlich. <lacht> my heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers. But this time, Yuri's eyes meet mine. Uff. How did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. Notice a chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breaths. I raise my arm. <sighs> like before, Yuri parts her lips. But it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. Okay, everyone. Ah! Ah! Yuri jolts back. It's time to share poems! MGG, you can help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? Y yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. Uh, I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. I get the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. Hmm, who should I show my poem to first? Yuri! <clears throat> Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? MTG, this one might even be better than yesterday's. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more Im imagery. You already visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine, take your time. You already breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah, 
just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Theory nots. Really, uh, I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just love at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Hmm, even your close friends? Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway, do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah, I do. If it's with you. Wait, what? If it's with you? Yeah. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night, while, was, while, while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as, a one, as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fat will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. The, the moon increments its face and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife, the very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. As sliced the bread fresh and soft, the raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied, satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken, to f has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood, classic Pav Pavlovian condition. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. Hmm. Was kann man da rein interpretieren? <coughs> Now level 17. Nice. Weiter so. Hmm. Was kann man denn da rausholen oder interpretieren? Wer weiß, wer weiß. Kein, kein Blut am Messer. A rush of blood. Also. Äh, keine Ahnung. Naja. Äh. Uh. Was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery, imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I want to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. 
try to keep them to yourself but because they're embarrassing and people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, MGG? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I, I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. You're good at lot. Get a. You're good at a lot of things, writing, listening. There, there really aren't many people like you, MGG. That's exaggerating a little bit. It's just how I feel. I never thought I would feel so comfortable sharing my writing. But now I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. And you're to thank for that. It's it's nothing really. He smiled sincerely at me. Just for a moment her timidness seems to disappear. Kizayori. Ah! I like this one MGG. It has some nice feelings in it. Oh, I'm, I'm glad. Does it mean it's better than yesterday's? Hmm, let me think. I don't know. I guess I like them both. <laughs> That's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad, but that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess... Conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. <sighs> Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Ah, oh, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt or hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm, I guess I like happy poems. Und deswegen mag sie so komische, düstere Themen. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Oh, okay. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Better sweet. Yeah, I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad. I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most, but sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug and make a nice happy rainbow. Sorry, that's unexpectedly, unexpectedly poetic. Eh, it is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, MGG. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? <coughs> Bis gleich, Test. Bullshit, dass die Personen sich ein fettes Gedicht ausdenken und da fette mit vorn reinballern. Was wie, warum? Naja, die schreiben ja, die schreiben ja im, im, in erster Linie erstmal für sich und die müssen das ja auch irgendwie trainieren und wird zum Beispiel unser Charakter seinen eigenen Stil finden und so weiter. Und ja, ich meine, die Schule geht schon bis nachmittag. Ah ja. ah ja, deswegen sind sie halt in einem Club, weil, weil die halt Zumindest für Monika, Natsuki und Yuri ähm, 
die mögen halt Schreiben und Literatur und so weiter. Und wollen das halt dann dementsprechend auch äh, teilen, ihre Vorlieben, ihre Gedanken, ihr, ihre eigenen Kreationen teilweise und so weiter. Ein bisschen hochgegriffen. Ah ja, es ist, es ist halt auch, es ist halt auch äh, Japan. Die haben ja sowieso an sich eine, eine andere Vorstellung von Fleiß und Arbeit, in die man äh, Arbeit, die man in Sachen reinsteckt und so weiter. Die geben sich dann schon sehr Mühe, auch wenn sie es gar nicht wirklich müssten oder so. Kann vielleicht, kann vielleicht an der Kultur an sich liegen. Ich weiß nicht, wer, wer das Spiel ge, äh, programmiert und geschrieben hat und so. Ob das vielleicht eventuell auch direkt Japaner gewesen sind, die, die halt mit der Kultur selbst schon viel mit zu tun hatten und dementsprechend halt die japanische Kultur mit reinbringen. <lacht> Hallo Test. Smash Mode. Ui. Cool. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all of the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles, all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring, exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done, I open up, and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They are all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Das ist aber nicht so, nicht so fröhlich. <lacht> Maximus, Level 7. Glückwunsch. Holy crap. Sorry, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, well not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well... Never mind. I'm thinking too hard about this. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, oh, thanks. I feel like I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. I've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Sayuri's always had a 
had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. <laughs> well, I can admit that it's better than the last one. It's nice to see you, that you're putting in some effort. That's good. But I still don't like this at all. It's trying too hard to be serious. Huh? What do you mean by that? Poems don't need to be all deep sounding to express something. It's going to just sound like you're forcing it until... Uh, forcing it unless you really don't suck at it. Honestly, don't bother trying to write poems like this until you're on Yuri's level. Natsuki stops short of all... Short all of a sudden. Don't tell me. Huh? You're not, you're not just trying to impress Yuri, are you? What are you talking about? And keep your voice down. No Yuri would love this kind of... this angsty. Just because she's talented, she's a talented writer doesn't mean... I, I mean... Huh? Looks like I'm in trouble. I somehow struck a nerve. Though what I did is beyond me. I am so done with you. Tsuki so shoves the poem I handed her back over to me. Take your stupid poem. If you write it for someone else, just don't show it to me. Ouch. This is what I get for letting a younger girl step into my business. Unless I was a mind reader, I was destined to be in a world of pain from the start. At least Natsuki wasn't really the girl I was trying to impress in the first place. Oh, der, ihr, der Zeug dürfen wir nicht lesen. Schade. Hi again, MGG. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote to for today? Sure, here you go. Gave my poem to Monica. Alright, this one's good. It feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Hmm, I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most... romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. Or when she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on inside her. Hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I I've tried. Who knows what goes on in that head of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just mean that I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. But still, defending her like that, you must be pretty into her. Eh? You completely misunderstood. <laughs> Calm down, I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already she's already got a boyfriend. But Wait, really? Yeah, a fictional one, anyway. Ah, oh, awesome. Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but... Well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Well, well I know. I was just saying... But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Right, let's take a look. Save me. Feng Shun Gudan. The colors are they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophon cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise that won't stop. Violent, grating wave forms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem. Of meaningless. Load me. What? Okay. Irgendwie von allen von allen Gedichten an dem Tag war erstaunlicherweise Juris Gedicht das äh, fröhlichste. Hmm, it's even more abstract than your last one, huh? 
<laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if I if you don't like it. No, I never said that. Just a kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I'm kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with, a, with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. Okay. You'll never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected might ha may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay... Okay everyone, we're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. <sighs> Do we do really do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We we'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last-minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be p performing! Performing? P uh, Monica? Yeah, we're going to have a poetry performance. Ooh, slab poetry. Nice. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's putting it on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sorry, who's been coloring a poster holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no, it's not a bad idea, but I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Mitsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yori shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Sayori. I understand wh where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. But I still think we should give it our best. We are the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah, it's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right, and it's those reasons that we are all in this club today. Did you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the, the same feelings that brought you here in the first place. I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. 
The least we could do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright! <sighs> Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. <sighs> I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone! You're the best, Yuri! This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh, you'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect us to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off the, to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. <clears throat> the title of this poem is The Way They Fly. <clears throat> Monica be begins reciting a poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yori has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the re recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica! <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I I'll go next. Well, you're just fired up all of a sudden. Yori clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yori anxiously glances at each, uh, each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns and structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirl whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her, as if she bewilded, as if she bewilded even herself. I... It's, it's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we are caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Sayori hops, Sayori hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. <clears throat> Sayori, it's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah, try not to think of it like you're re reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Sayori begins, Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem is, isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. 
Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to react more deeply into someone. Uh, reach. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. <laughs> Even MTG liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does, what does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's well. I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little bit more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? <laughs> don't make me go before MGG. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let MGT lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. It's okay. It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then, that just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... Uh, it's called... Why are you looking at me? Because you're presenting. <laughs> anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken out loud. Uh, the words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. It wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. The, well, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be the, will be easy, uh, way easier. I can put whatever face I want for other people. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about, the f about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what's, what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? It'll be making pa I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez, I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Ah, uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think it's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday is the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club, 
and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Where'd you go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be uh, it must be a little nice though. Well <laughs> how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, MGG. You don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Oh, no wonder. Uh, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I, I mean... Sayori fumbles with her birds. So let's just say that one day Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. Yeah. <laughs> well. Walking home with Yuri, huh? Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? I, I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialize, I would feel awful turning her down, so... Isn't she so beautiful and smart? Why not both? Richtig, warum nicht beide? Wer auch was, ja. That has nothing to do with what I just said. <laughs> you admitted it. Jeez. There's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know. Need you? Sayori, I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement man for you. Hmm. You will say so. The conversation trails off and I'm left feeling awkward. But it was kind of a fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. So, wir schreiben noch, wir schreiben noch, äh, Poem und dann machen wir was anderes. Viel gelesen heute. Okay, was mag denn, was mag unsere, äh, unsere Juri denn? Die mag Unending und Frightening und Disorientated. Threat only tragedy is Sayori. Stable pain drops. Disarray. Massacre. Ruined. Meagar. Secretive. Philosophy. Graveyard. Okay. Hello, Potter. Hey, no, Max Sayori. Hello, Sayori. Uh, 
Tree. Viel. Ziemlich viel Sayori, aber ich glaube trotzdem noch. Ich glaube trotzdem mehr. Mehr Yuri als Sayori. Sicher jetzt halbe mal. An einem anderen Platz. Okay, äh, ja. Machen dann, weiß nicht, Freitag oder Samstag weiter. Mit dem. Yeah.